Hello everybody, and welcome. We are here for the very last hurrah in this Ultimate Virtual Season 4 season. It's been a wild ride, spanning over three months, 101 days since the season started in Adelaide all the way up to now. And it's been an absolute blast doing this all with you. It's been truly amazing. Um, we had a long break in the middle, something that a lot of people were not happy about. And nor was I. But we returned for eight races in 12 days. And my oh my have we had some amazing action in those days. We'll get you up to date on the standings. Put it learning, looking at the drivers first. Because it's the simpler of the matters. Rito must win with Grandi not scoring points. That is his requirement. He is 24 points off the title. He would lose a tiebreak. Having not won a race this season, even winning this race, he'd still have won two fewer than Grandy. He must win with Grandy not scoring points. Alternatively, he can win with Grandy scoring a point, uh, and then Rito would need the fastest lap of the race. And that is uh, that is the call. Uh, an unknown in there, indeed, uh, is Hetmenica, who needs a P2 with Grandy not scoring points. Even then, if Rito were to win, even taking fastest lap, uh, but Het finishing in second place. Het would then take it on the tiebreak, having won one more race this season. So Het would like a P2 uh, with Grandy not scoring points, and then he doesn't need to worry about anything. Grandy could also additionally uh, score one point, I believe, and Het would be fine, or even two points. So a P10 or a P9 would also be fine. Uh, we'll drop back into the quality session uh, for a moment. I think we just got a weather update. I'm not sure if that was dry weather. Um, there's not much point in us having it not on the fastest lap setting. So it's Hetmenica on provisional pole position. Of course, there are no tokens to be spent here in Monza. Not a single token. There is 50% rain, as is customary with season finales. There's no reverse grid this season. This is normal qualifying for a normal grid. Um, but it should be an absolute cracking race. Uh, and it is, of course, as normal, 30 minutes long or there or thereabouts, sometimes a little longer. The track has dried up a little bit. I uh, don't think we've seen anyone improving on their times. It's going to get wetter now. I think people are going to come in and put on some new wet weather tyres. Uh, that's probably the smart move. Uh, so, for the constructors, it's a lot more complicated. BFX lead on 158 points. Thunder X 7 behind them. BAV 7 behind them. Velocity 2 behind them. And Porsche 3 behind Velocity. <laughs> so we have five teams in championship contention. SFR, poor things in 6th place, um, not in it anymore. But as it stands, so Thunder X are 7 points off the Championship League, uh, BAV are 14 points, Velocity 16 points, and Porsche 19 points. Uh, BFX, if they win the race, for all intents and purposes, win the title. Uh, they simply need a P1 and P8 to secure the bag. Um, then it would it, it's all going to play out. We're going to try and do some calculations mid-race, so just bear with me because I'm not the fastest with my maths, uh, but I will try and keep you up to date on how the constructor's going. Also to watch out for is Papi Pops and Fuerza Roja. Fuerza Roja will have a tie break, meaning Papi Pops, uh, because they won last race, meaning Papi Pops will need to score 12 points more than Fuerza uh, to stay up, and that is an unlikely task. Uh, we have drivers on very old tyres now just coming into the pit lane. In fact, we've had some drivers pitting already. Those drivers are Hetmenica, who might just come out. I think he's just on an outlap now, so um, we'll see these drivers. These tyres have uh, very good life in them. That's why these drivers have been able to do seven laps in the wet on this wet tyre. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll watch on with interest at these drivers just finishing up their, their flying laps uh, in a bit. Uh, and we'll see who came in later. Fox and Apple Amazing running near the front of this qualifying pack. Uh, Abver also in there, uh, all running sort of in the lower top 10 positions. The track drying, Het on fresh wet weather tyres. It won't be an improvement though for Het, nor will it be for most of the drivers behind. I believe the drying conditions are hindering the performance of the wet weather tyre, apart from Kubo who improves to fifth position. He's done well with that lap. Um, most others, Eurist improves but only to 16th, so the velocity cars uh, either are paused in earlier in the qualifying session or just looking forward to it now. It looks like we're going to have very limited dry running, but it will just about come at the end of the session. It might be a case, again, like it was in Imola, uh, where you don't get those fast lap times. 
uh, because drivers are only on their outlap. Ikoloski improves to P6. Uh, Fox improves to P8. Not many other improvements going on. Uh, it's very much a power track, so you need to watch out for that. But look at this. We've got two of our championship contenders here, Menica and Rito. First and second on the timing sheets at the moment. Grandi all the way down in 15th. So the no points possibility for him is very, very much on the cards. Um, when we do the grid rundown, I'll run through the car overview because I don't want to miss the end of this qualifying session. The FVRs first on track are in to the pit lane. These drivers will get this outlap. And then they'll have about a minute for their flying lap, which should be more than enough, but it'll probably be just the one attempt. Drivers who are holding off to pit a little bit later might also find themselves having some success, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But this is really exciting. We're getting essentially a shootout right at the end of this qualifying session. Um, and yeah, we've got now everybody who's come in, Vladnator and Sobel, uh, the last two to pit, Jeruni will complete the outlap, and that is actually slower uh, than the fastest wet times. Only just, though. I mean, Ikoloski was two hundredths off it. They're going to be praying for no rain as they absolutely try and fly around. You're really going to the Parabolica now, but that's not the end of the lap like you'd think in a normal version of Monza. We've got the whole banking section to go approved by the FIA for this very, very special event. The season finale, we're going to have to see as the drivers come across the line one by one, what times they're able to set. Can Jeruni hit the front? Yes, he will. Provisional pole. Can Hetek get off him? No, he can't. He doesn't even improve, nor does Goose, nor do some of those behind. Rito improves the third. We're going to have some rain now as well, so drivers will need to improve this lap. Apple Amazing goes up to third position. Um, Andrew will improve, but only to 12th. Caddo up to third. What a great lap from him in the Fuerza Roja car. Uh, Suicide improves, only up to 11th position. Picker improves, I believe that was up to 10th. Grandy will improve, up to 8th. That's a massive improvement from where he was earlier. Anybody else going up, Uris to 15th. Looks like the qualifying session will end here and the rain's coming back anyways. It's been an absolutely mad 7 minutes of qualifying here in Monza, but we'll have you the grid rundown as soon as we know actually what it is. Um, it looks like it's going to be Jeruni from Goose, the front two in the pack. Absolutely astonishing. A front row lockout for the Flying V Racing drivers. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, they were the only team to get that speed upgrade, and it's definitely paid dividends. They chose to save, go for that speed. And here is your grid for the race itself. Jeruni will start from pole position. What a fantastic lap from him, I believe. Might have taken pole last time around. It's, it's hard to know, but he definitely won last season's finale. No, of course he didn't take pole because it was reverse grid. He won last season's finale. He's going to be looking for a repeat of that today. Goose will start in second position. Massive shame these Flying V Racing guys aren't in the championship contention anymore. It looks like the top teams were too busy focusing on sabotaging each other to actually try and get that speed upgrade. Flying V Racing saved for it, they got it, and look at the pace and performance it's given them here. Absolutely astonishing, a front row lockout for the team in yellow and black. Hetmenica will start third, that's good for his championship challenge. Uh, Cado will start fourth, then Rito starts fifth ahead of Apple, amazing. Good qualifying for Porsche. BAV lockout the fourth row, seventh Andrews ahead of eighth Ikoloski. Vladinator takes a solid ninth position. He was low down earlier on, so I'll be pleased with that. And Grandi, um, one of our championship protagonists, will start in tenth place. I believe that a P8 is all he needs uh, in order to completely secure the title as long as Het doesn't win. Uh, it will be a difficult one, as if Het doesn't finish in second place, if he finishes only um, third place, even taking the fastest lap of the race, he's unable to overtake Grandi. So as long as Het finishes third or lower, he's fine. As long as Rito doesn't win, he's fine. But uh, in the event that they do, he will need some points on the board, uh, and that's what he's going to be looking to do. His teammate Pit Crew starts right behind in 11th, and it's Suicide. Uh, Kubo will start 13th, Eurus 15th really poor for Team Velocity to see their cars in that position. This is a huge dent in their championship hopes. Kubo qualified quite low on in Season 2 finale. That cost him third in the championship. It might just cost the team here today. Anti will start between them. Then it's Fox, Andrian, Abver, Pappy and Sobel. And a round of applause to Caddo. P4 in qualifying in the ninth fastest car is absolutely astonishing. He's done so well with that. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the overview. So, last race we had a save or sabotage mechanic uh, introduced where teams could 
uh, save and get rolls from 1 to 175. Uh, or sabotage and get their normal rolls, but take 50 off another team's rolls. A lot of teams targeted BFX, uh, which put them down. You can see that they lost 105 on their grip. They lost 148 on their turbo. So they went down a grip level uh, and three turbo levels. It was initially a lot more, but they also were able to roll to get back up because they saved themselves. So they rolled something like 145 and 102, and they roll and they, they did well. They recovered some of that lost ground. It has made a very interesting championship conundrum here because BAV are now the fastest car. They were one of the main teams looking to sabotage BFX. They've just slid right in and just like season three, they've usurped that highest position. Um, then we've got Velocity, uh, Porsche and BFX all tied on that 8.4 index, which is astonishing to have three teams tied on that with BFX and Velocity having identical cars as well. Uh, Thunder X, uh, the big black sheep among this front five and the constructors, they are somehow up in second still, but with a car that is uh, 0.8 worse than most of their competitors and 1.2 worse than the lead car BAV. Uh, it should be an absolute thriller here. There are no tokens. It is a pure show of driving skill and we'll have to see how this goes. Here we go then. For the final time in Season 4, we're underway here in Monza. Jeruni gets a decent start from pole position. Goose immediately puts some pressure on his teammate. Caddo might try and draw alongside at Medica. Also in this fight, a lot of soft runners uh, at the front at the beginning. Uh, Rito will take the medium and he's going to just try and make up a position. Het dives to the inside. Can't get a move on either of the yellow and black FVRs. Jeruni at the inside retakes that first place that he got from pole. Uh, of course, Ikaloski now at the inside. Can he try and get three cars in the space of a corner? He can't, but he's made great ground up from the grid. I believe he started eighth, so he's done fantastically well there. Caddo has lost positions. He's down to seventh. Rito in fifth at the minute, and that's amazing. Down to eighth. Pickrew Grandi swapped positions with his teammate Kubos, made up a spot off the start as well. Uh, no big loser. So Sobel up a couple positions. Jeruni leads, and he's looking for his second consecutive season finale victory. He's not taken a win, so so far this season, he'd absolutely love one uh, here in Monza. Hetmenica sits in second position. That will be all that he needs for the championship with Grandi down in 11th. This, uh, on current form, will give Hetmenica the World Drivers' Championship. Goose in third place at the moment. It's going to be Caddo uh, battling with Ikoloski there on the softs. Of course, remember... Though with the crossover, we've got a ghosting checkpoint, as we see Andy uh, has fallen massively off the back of this pack. We've got a ghosting checkpoint, allowing the cars to cross over cleanly. Uh, we're very thankful for that, but also that means that battles going into that cross uh, crossroads, obviously in real life going underneath, we don't quite have the three-dimensional aspect in this 2D game. Goose sets the fastest lap of the race on that last lap. He's chasing down his teammate, but the Flying V Racing cars are doing, as their name suggests, they are absolutely flying out in the lead at the moment. We thought this would be a speed track, but the one speed advantage that they have over the entire grid is absolutely enormous. This is unbelievable pace from them. Uh, Ikoloski still holds third. Hermenica is going to look to take it off him. He has to switch to the outside line coming into that massive banked final corner. If he can just slip through, no. He has to stay back for the time being. Cano's done very well to hold on to fifth position. We've got a big battle in the background. It's Pit Crew versus Apley versus Uris, who's made his way up into the top 10. Sobel already in P12. That BFX nerfed coming into the final round after the sabotages of other teams. But he is absolutely not going to take that as Sobel on lap 5 has made up 10 positions from his grid slot already. Make that 9 because Uris does get back through. But Sobel's going to have another attempt coming up through the banking section. Sobel on the low line. Uris on the high line. Sobel will get through. Very nicely done there. Apple amazing around the outside of Pickrow. is going to take 8th position back. Rito down in 7th at the moment. This will not be good enough for him to take that championship. We'll do a quick calculation of the teams in just a second. Andres, Ikonoski, Hetmenica, Goose and Jeruni all doing well. So with Porsche currently in 3rd and 10th position. That would mean uh, da, 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 that they're taking 30 points home. They need 19 points to make up on BFX in order to win the championship here. Uh, Rito currently taking home six points and Sobel, I believe, uh, just now in eighth position means that they will be making uh, t -t 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 seven and eight. Uh, eight points up. So the 20, that's 22 in Porsche's favor, but obviously the position's very much dynamic, very much switching around a lot of the time. Uh, so we'll have to wait until a little later in the races. Only lap seven here. 
Uh, and we've got our first drivers coming into the pit lane. Medica goes in. He's actually going to block off Goose a little bit, but Goose was already going to get a slow stop in the double stack anyways. Onto the mediums they've decided to go. That is an interesting strategy. Uh, a lot of these lead teams have gone with. Rita has stayed out on his mediums, as has Andres. They uh, inherit the race lead. Rito currently uh, in a position to win the championship with Grandi down in 15th position, battling Sobel for it at the moment. Medica only in third. Rito is in the championship lead by a handful of points. It would be uh, literally, I think it's Rito now on 107, Grandi on 106, and Het now on 108 because he's gotten his way up into second place. We could have three drivers at the end of the season all separated by literally two points. Absolutely unbelievable this season that we've been having. Het Medica is now going to look to put some pressure on for the race lead. He's taken his stop already. Rito has not as they go uh, through the crossroads there. Andre still hanging out in third place. Jeruni uh, is doing relatively well, but he's not the leader of those who have pitted so far. That title goes to Het Medica uh, and Ikoloski, who he's just passed uh, there as well. Goose has dropped down into 7th position. It was a great qualifying, a great start from the FVRs, but they've been slightly bogged down in this pack, and Caddo is going to look to make some ground back up on that soft tyre. The Fuerza Roja uh, team know that they have, well, they have a pretty solid car now. Until recently, they had poor acceleration. That hindered them a lot, but they've had good speed a lot of the time, and that really plays into their hands on a track like this, particularly Caddo qualifying in an amazing 4th position for the team. Uh, really good to see. Uh, they're going to just look for a pass now. Caddo around the outside of Ikoloski. Can he get pit crew coming into the first corner here? Yes, he can. Goes through and takes fourth place back. It is now uh, Jaruni in third. Hetmenica in second. Rito extending those mediums for 11 laps. He's absolutely slaughtering those tyres. But I think he's realised that tyre wear is not a massive factor here. And it's all about speed at the temple of speed. Even more so. Uh, than it is in modern day Monza. This is the Monza layout from the 1920s. So it is much more about your pure and raw engine power. And that's why um, BFX did well to bin off a bit of grip and turbo. Those are probably lesser important stats than acceleration. But definitely speed here is so, so crucial. Goose chasing down pit crew. Jeruni. Then we've got Caddo. Uh, just behind that Medica, he's done really well on those softs, he's made up so much ground, even just in that last corner, around the outside at the final corner, can he take the high line, he switches back to the low line, he goes through, and Caddo will lead for Fuerza Roja in a tokenless race and sets the fastest lap in doing so, the soft is a rapid tyre around this track, Picker is yet to come in, he's in 4th place, he's on the hard compound tyre, this does indicate how much it might just be worth it to stretch out those tyres as much as you possibly can. We'll take a status update, currently Porsche on course only scoring 18 points because that's amazing, outside the points we've got uh, Thunder X in place to score, Grandy down in 18th, so only scoring 12 points. Um, then it would be BAV currently looking to score... Uh, uh, 12 points so yeah crazy stuff um, Rito in 5th position now battle over 2nd place rages it's Jeruni versus Hetmenica two good friends in real life two foes on the racetrack Het up the inside into the final corner Caddo comes in off those softs they don't last a very long time it might even just be worth stretching out the tyres uh, as much as you're able to at this track because it really does show to work pit crew has finally come in but that massive overcut has gotten him into eighth position that's really good for thunder rex and pit crew who's been a definite second driver all season long he scored about a third of the points that his teammate has this season uh, and he's showing who's boss here grandy is really not that close to the points paying positions he's 10 positions behind his teammate and that's not a good place to be in uh, as it stands, that fight for a second is now the fight for the lead with Caddo in. Uh, Hetmenica versus Jeruni will rage ever onwards. Rito in third place at the moment in the current driver's standings. It looks like it'll be uh, Hetmenica who will win the championship. Grandi out for the count at the moment. He just has to absolutely hope and pray that somebody who isn't Rito or Het will win this race. Because that would be absolutely massive if Jeruni 
Goose, even Caddo could possibly win this race as we see Het and Jeru now in. They're off their mediums. Het takes the hards. Jeru onto the softs. They're going to come in neck and neck. Have FVR discover the soft is the way. No, Goose takes the medium. Uh, Andres makes his way up into third place. Then it's Caddo and Rito uh, in second and first at the minute. They've yet to pit. And we're going to have rain. This has played right into the hands of the pole who didn't start on pole, but is now leading this race. But Caddo is going to look to challenge him for it. Who would have thought if you said at the start of this season, he'd have a BFX and a Fuerza Roja fighting it out for the win in the finale. Not a single soul would have believed what you had said. But look at this. Caddo comes in and out of the pit lane. And after his third stop of the race, leads here at the Italian Grand Prix. Rito still in second. Gerini Hetz dropped down to fourth. He was looking so good for that championship position. Andres in fifth. Pit crew and Euros sixth and seventh. Can Euros try and make up a position as they come through the King Corner? Whereas now the Ascari chicane. They didn't have it back then. Ascari uh, was like probably barely born. Um, no, he would have been in like his... He would have been a teenager, maybe. Um, Caddo now leads Rito. This would be an um, unbelievable story, just for the record. We've got the Pappy Pops cars. Uh, yeah, 19th and 20th. Fuerza Roja once again are in a position where they are leading the final race of the season. And their, their competition for those relegation positions are just absolutely miles away. The Pappy, Pop cars are, Pappy Pops cars with only six speed, remember, because Fuerza blocked them from getting that speed upgrade uh, with their sabotage, getting minus 100 on Pappy Pops' speed. That's proven so crucial because one speed level is so important at this track. And they've they, they've done it absolutely right. Kamikaze's played a blinder there. Uh, Jeruni is now past Rito. They're still actually inside each other. That's curious. Uh, Jeruni's just going to take through here and he's going to inherit second place. That is, there's like quirk of the ghost stick that you don't actually unghost until you stop clipping with another car so you can run the same racing line which is quite funny Jeruni now makes a really good overtake around the outside of Caddo can Rito sneak up the inside here yes he can on Caddo can he on Jeruni yes he can Rito hits the front and leads the world championship here this is the win that he absolutely needs Grandi out for the counter at Menica only in fourth he needs to make up a couple positions but he's got seconds to make up to get back up to that second place Caddo in second, Jeruni Het under pressure from Andres, his countryman, looking to take that fourth spot off him. Andres is, is playing for pride, but also for that um, Constructors' Championship. But Ikoloski down in ninth place, it's not looking amazing for them. BFX only need a win and an eighth place. They've currently got a win. Uh, they've currently got a P2 driver. Um, it is looking heavily in BFX's favour. It's going to be difficult to do the calculations mid-race. We'll give it a go now. So we've got Rito and we've got Sobel. This is currently on course for 18 points. That would put them on 176. Thunder X currently only on course for 8 points. That would put them on 159. That means they're not challenging BFX at the moment. BAV on course for only... Uh, 14 points that'll put them on 158 a point behind Thunder X mind you, uh, not in contention Velocity currently scoring uh, just the 6 points that wouldn't put them anywhere near close enough and Hemenica and Apple Amazing 10 points for them, that'll put them on 149, so BFX by finishing merely on the podium today can almost guarantee a Constructors' Championship but Rito is going to have to fight tooth and nail for this Drivers' Championship and it's not completely in his control. He has to absolutely pray that Hermenica cannot make up the required positions to finish in second place. Uh, we'll take a look outside the top 10 for the moment because it's Apple Amazing running in 11th. He needs to get into the points, help out his team Porsche. Avra in 12th, Sobel in 13th. He needs to do the same for BFX. It's Fox, then Andrian. Uh, Grandi in 16th only. He's going to be the first driver to gamble onto the slick uh, with the track pretty much dry. Now he's a lap down from the race leaders. That is a distance that is nearly impossible to come back from, as we saw from Rito's huge stoppage in Mugello, losing a lap on the race leaders. Really not great to see that. Uh, and he was unable to make it back up. But we've got light rain coming. And Rito, who stayed out on the wet weather tyres, has a seven-second advantage. Will he stay out on these wets yet again? Jeruni, Caddo, Andres, Hermenica, all those behind all came in for slicks. 
And uh, Rita's going to stay out yet again. It's a dry track at the moment, but the rain is very much on the way. And all the drivers will be coming back in. Surely for the Inters, you'd, you'd recommend that they just stayed out. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that way. And it's going to be heavy rain. And Rita has three pit stops fewer than Jeruni, who is now 14 seconds behind the Polish driver. A Rita win is all but confirmed here. But he needs Hepmenica to not finish in second position. It's so crucial that that happens. It's so, so important that that happens. Uh, if Hep finishes in third, he'd score 10 points fewer than Rito. Rito would currently uh, be on course for 106 points, levelling him... Sorry, 107 points, putting him one ahead of Grandi. Hecht, with a third place, would be on for 105 points. And so a faster slap wouldn't do anything for him either. He needs a second place. And this looks like it's going to be the fight because Rito is absolutely storming after a bit of luck with the rain, a bit of staying out and strategy there. He's looking for a nearly nailed on drivers and even constructors championship. Cano inherits third place at the moment. He could get Fuerza Roja's third ever podium. They won last time out. They of course got that podium too uh, in Valencia. We've got light rain coming back. Rito would have to majorly screw up his strategy to lose this gap now but he is on much older wet so he has lost a couple seconds. He might actually fall back into within a pit stop but that may just be wishful thinking. Het needs to get a move on. He needs to make up the uh, I think it'll be something like five seconds that it would have to be for him to get back up. Rito is coming into the pit lane for new wets just as clouds are announced. He's going to take literally only a few laps on this and this makes that slightly more interesting. He doesn't believe that the wets he was on initially could go to the end of that stint. Caddo versus Jeruni, RMC teammates in Ultimate League, but absolute fighters in Ultimate Virtual. They're both looking for that second place. They're both looking for a fantastic podium. They've neither had amazing seasons. Caddo with that one podium and two P4s. Jeruni uh, with no podium so far this season. Only a fourth place uh, in Valencia to... No, that's not right. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. Only a fourth place in Valencia to write home back and then some other minor points scoring positions. But Rito came into the pits. He's now just six seconds ahead of this pack. His gap was 14. The track is drying, but Rito's going to look to make up as much lap time as he can uh, on these much fresher wet tyres. And he's made the right call because it's now drying out again. So Rito will look to just extend this gap as much as he possibly can. Jeruni and Cano still going at it. Jeruni on the high line over the banking will take second place back. Andres pit crew has now overtaken Het Menico's fall down into sixth position. This is the one hope, the one driver, the one bastion, uh, the beacon of hope for any team that's hoping that BFX don't win here today. Het Menico needs to just get a move on. He needs to make up those positions, get up into second place, but he's a few seconds off it now. Rito is not really extending that gap out in the lead. It's stayed at about six seconds. It might just go above seven here though, because there are some wet tyre conditions definitely coming, but the pit stop uh, almost definitely not justifiable uh, if the track had dried up. It might just be if we have a longer extended period of rain. Cano still holds the fastest lap. He set that in the dry. The track is all but dry at the moment. We've got a great fight going on at second, third and fourth separated by very little. But Hare is just falling off the back here. He might need just a little bit of luck. It's in the hands of the racing gods to decide this. Rito is still falling away. Maybe it's just the slipstream or boost or power that these drivers have from each other. It's very difficult to tell, but he's now only four seconds ahead, and he's still on fresher tyres. Jeruni now has a Fuerza Roja fighting him. It's not the one he's fighting for position. It's Andrian, a lap down, trying to cause Jeruni as many problems as possible, but he gets absolutely forced wide. The track is drying up. That gap has dropped from 14 seconds back down to four. Remember, it is absolutely vital that Rito wins this race even if he takes second place fastest lap all that jazz he'll be five points off Grandi Grandi may just see his lead protected here because Het is not looking to challenge for the podium at the moment he's only a couple seconds off this massive train fighting for it Rito absolutely needs the win and Grandi in 16th place is just going to be praying he's trying to push Goose back into the fight there but Goose has actually dropped down to 11th spot from the front row uh, poor showing from him in this race, he just wasn't able to make that rapid qualifying count. And at the end of the day, 
he need all the points he can get, but they should still be absolutely safe with a P2 here. Uh, it was never really in doubt, to be totally honest, unless Pappy Pops absolutely revolutionised racing here. But no, they're all fighting over 18th, 19th and 20th positions. Rito still leads. He's now a couple laps up on the Pappy Pops drivers, who will be looking to get out of his way. Maybe no suicide blocks him a little bit. Slows him down, actually. Backing him up just that bit. It's now a two-second gap. This is astonishing. How has this time been made back up by Jeruni? He is a man on a charge because Cado's not really been sticking with him. Jeruni, with that extra speed, may just be the last beacon of hope for Grandy looking to win the driver's title. For any of the four other teams looking to win the constructors, he may just be the one. Pappy is coming for the Inters. That's a bizarre choice. Uh, but Jeruni, with this extra speed who's been able to stick in this front pack, unlike his teammate Goose, and just make it count. Goose obviously taking five pit stops hasn't helped, but Jeruni has done it as well. The gap just two seconds, hovering around two or three seconds. The track now drying. We're going to get probably 20 laps to the end to see what these drivers can do. Rito is into the pit lane. Jeruni will come in too, and Cado, no doubt, behind. Rito takes the hard. Is that the right choice? He's going to be looking to save on stops. Jeruni on the softs will be looking to absolutely make a charge here as we start lap 37 we have just 19 left to run in the entire season and Jeruni can catch Rito to ensure that Rito does not win the drivers championship the teams is still very much all to play for especially a second place might just be good enough for BFX because they do have that 7 point cushion over Thunder X with Pit Crew only in 5th. They have a 14 point cushion uh, over uh, BAV who currently have their driver sitting in only ninth and 4th. So Rito by finishing ahead of all these drivers will be able to ensure it. Rito just shows Jeruni the grass on the inside. Can he get in? Yes he goes to the inside into the Parabolica and Jeruni will inherit the lead of the Italian Grand Prix. Not inherit it. He had to absolutely fight for it, but Rito will come back. Low line into the banking, into the final corner. Rito takes the lead back and takes the championship lead back. This is the most intense fight we've ever had for a World Drivers' Championship, and it's going to come down to the final 15 laps here in Monza. Jeruni look to make inroads with those softs, but he's been re overtaken by Rito, uh, who's now been backed up. Blocked even by his teammate. Menica is in sixth. He's a pit stop ahead, but only a position ahead of his teammate Porsche. Not currently scoring nearly enough points to take this out of the hands of the BFX. As Jeruni drives again down the stop, finish straight into turn one. He's got the move done already. Jeruni hits the front and Grandi retakes the championship lead. The man who is currently two laps down. On the same bit of racetrack as these two fighting out front. Grandy is going to try and probably crash Rito out if he can uh, absolutely manage it. He absolutely gives a, a guard of honour to Jeruni up the inside there. And Jeruni takes this lead back. Rito currently on course to score 18 points. That would see him only on 100. Grandy leads the championship by 6 points. Rito, by making it one position, can put it 7 points further in his favour. And win and lead the championship by one single point. But Jeruni currently up front. He is going to have to come into the pit lane though. These rests. Cado looking for what will be an incredible podium finish for him. With no tokens in a Fuerza or a that has come so far since the start of the season. He has to hold off Andres Fora. Andres and Ikoloski BAV actually not scoring terrible points here. They're currently on course to take 16. But with Rito uh, and BFX taking 18 at the minute. It looks like they're currently on course to wrap up the Constructors' Championship. Not the Drivers, though. Rito only in second place on the heart. He's stuck with Jeruni relatively well, though. This man had a 14-second advantage over all of the rest. And this is absolutely astonishing. We had Rito and Grandi midway through Season 1, if you could even cast your mind back to it. Grandi used five tokens on each of the first two races. Rito sets a personal best lap time. That is what happens when you get a lot of wet conditions. But he's caught right back up to the back of Jeruni. Jeruni's softs have gone off. Rito's hearts are flourishing here. And Rito retakes the lead here of the Italian Grand Prix. He's going to look to try and extend it through the banking section with a superior grip he'll have on the hards over the softs at this stage of the stint. We have just 12 laps left to run here in Monza. And it's going to come 
come down to the wire. Giroudi will come into the pit lane. He will be praying for no rain at the moment. He goes for softs again. Will those take him the 12 laps? I very much doubt it, in fact. Uh, he might have to come in one more time. And Rito will only have one stop left in his strategy. He's got a six-second advantage. Giroudi falls down to fourth. It's now Andres up in second position. Forgive the voice cracks. I'm very excited and a bit ill. Uh, Cado versus Andres in second place now. What a great scrap this is, but they've not come in for fresh tyres, nor has Rito, who is actually looking really good to extend this gap out in the lead. Giroudi needs to not hit traffic here. That will be so important because it's definitely possible for Rito to undercut. And once he's on fresh, softer tyres, we're going to have rain. And Rito once again. With all the luck in the world that BFX have shown in their upgrades, that Rito has shown on the track here today. He got massively unlucky with Mugello, but swings and roundabouts. Rito comes into the pit lane, and the rain is on its way once again here in Monza. Rito takes the intermediate. Sobel blocks off Giruni, who's going to now probably take the wets. That might be the right call. Giruni so badly blocked in the pit lane. By Grandi, by the way, who is the man who will benefit most from a Giroudi win. And he is now seven seconds behind Rito, having taken three pit, stop, pit stops extra. The only thing going in his favour is the fact that heavy rain is on the way. It's here, the track is getting wetter, and the Inter is the wrong tyre to be on at the moment. But Giroudi will have to make up a gargantuan seven second gap in the course of only nine laps here in Monza. This will be the most intense finish to an ultimate virtual season that you will ever, ever see. Unbelievable. Five seconds is that gap now. Andres and Cano have all raced long, still been scrapping it out over the final pony position purely for pride at this point because it doesn't look like, uh, it, it looks like Fuerza are home and dry not dry at the moment, but home and dry in terms of the, the uh, fight for relegation. They are uh, in this top four, scoring more than enough points with Pappy Pops down the lower positions. But the clouds are coming back now. Giroudi will have very limited time as he laps Sobel once more. He'll have such little time to make inroads on Rito. Such little time, so few laps to catch him again. But it's 4.5 seconds. Rito with Inter's on a uh, very, very wet track. We'll be struggling the gap back up to above five seconds now. Is this even possible? Or if BFX wrapped it up, sealed it, put a bow on it, will Rito win this championship by just one point? The clouds are here. The sun is coming back. The track is drying. And this might go more into the favour of those around the Inter. Giroudi runs wide. That gap was 4.7. It's now 5.1. Picker is still there. Hetmenica. It's not going to happen, is it? He's five seconds off the podium here. It would take an enormous shake-up at the end of this wet stint. It would take Rito coming into the pit lane only for more rain to be announced. But that even is unlikely because he is on the tyre best suited. But look at the pace of Gironi. Two seconds in the last lap. He's made up on Rito. Two entire seconds. Three seconds off him now. But he's got six laps to make that gap back up. The track is drying. It's dipped below three seconds now. 2.97. 2.5. He is absolutely rapid here. Absolutely making up incredible time on Rito, who will surely be into the pit soon. He's got a little bit of traffic here. Het Medica no longer a threat for him. He's fighting only over fifth position there. This may just be the remaining positions in the constructors in the top five. But not in contention for the championship at the moment. 2.7 seconds is the gap. Giroudi getting held up by Vladinator though. It's low wet conditions. The gap will increase back again to 2. 3 seconds. 3.2. 2.9. What's it going to be? Will Rito come in this lap? No he won't. Can Giroudi get an undercut? He's going to try it. Unless the rain comes back over the course of this lap. Giroudi may just pull an absolute blinder. He's taken the softs. Rito. Still out there on old Inters. Giroudi needs the cleanest lap of his life. He's got traffic. The clouds are coming back, but no signs of rain here. Rito drifting through the Parabolica. We've got four laps left here. Rito so much at risk of an undercut. The gap has dropped from 10 to 9 to 
eight seconds. He comes into the pit lane right now. Jeruni on the soft is making his way through the banking, through the final corner. Rito is out on the soft. Jeruni, where will he come out in comparison to Rito right behind him? The gap, just one second. Jeruni with a speed advantage. He has three laps to make a one second gap, but the rain is coming back again with the <laughs> with a 50% rain it's coming back again he's going to need all the pace he can muster he's got just over two laps i'm about to faint oh my lord rita back into the pit lane jeruni will come in as well here they are so level Jeruni slightly blocked off by Apple Amazing. Rito might just be slowed by the Belarusian driver upon pit exit. 10 pit stops for Jeruni now. This is a fight for him that will not matter remotely. But look, we've got clouds coming back yet again. Just as pit crew came in and was the final driver to put on the wets. One and a half seconds. This has been <coughs> an absolute nail biter. But surely Jeruni can't do anything. He's got 1.8 seconds to make up and just over a lap to stop Rito from becoming a two-time champion of the world, giving BFX their second ever world title. The rain is here and it looks to be saying Jeruni now 1.6 behind. Can he make this gap back up? It's so close yet so far for Jeruni. For Grandy, for everyone who didn't want to see Rito win through the teams that have sabotaged him. But Rito, despite all the tribulations and trials he's had to overcome, comes round the final corner. And Rito, for the second time, is champion of the world. Jeruni takes second place here. Andrews will finish on the podium. It's going to be Caddo in fourth position. And Hermenica not able to finish in that second place that he so badly needed. Fifth for him, sixth for pit crew, seventh it looks to be for Ikoloski. The calculations start now. Rito, by winning the race, all, all but guaranteed, all but guaranteed a championship for them. Thunder X would have needed a second and third place and they've gotten only sixth and sixteenth. Rito and BBB Force X for the second time in their respective histories, are the world champions. People would have asked them what they would do if they didn't win. I guess we'll never find out. Rito, after nearly half an hour of racing here in Monza, will win the Italian Grand Prix. His first win, unbelievably, unbelievably his first win in 30 races and he wins the world championship with it what a way to do it in a car that was tied for second third and fourth fastest he got the luck on his side today got everything right played the strategy beautifully and he wins the world championship as do bfx Jeruni will take second place it's his first podium of the season he would have loved another finale win it's not going to be that way for him but he does well very talented driver in the right conditions. Uh, and he's gone the car to do it as well. Goose recovered back up to P8 in the end. So good points for FVR. Uh, they'll take home uh, 22 points here today. Andres takes third place. It's only third and seventh for BAV. So as we do the calculations, I'll just run through the rest of the top 10. Uh, Caddo takes fourth and fastest lap. Great points for him. Great points for Fuerza. 13 points. And that puts them safe in the championship. Um, Hermenica 5th, Picker 6th, Ikoloski 7th, Goose 8th, Abva 9th, Abva Amazing returns to the points for the 11th of 12 times this season and will finish in 10th place. Now, in the final standings, uh, BFX didn't uh, have two cars in the points. It was just Rito who scored points, but it was Rito who won here. They will finish off the season with 183 points. I'll write that down. 183 points. Uh, Thunder X came into this as unlikely contenders despite their second place in the championship. Um, 151 points they had. Pitco scores a further 8. That's going to put them on 159 points. Uh, B 
BAV 144 coming into this. They got a very respectable third and seventh position. Uh, that gives them um, six plus 15, 21 points. So that will put them on 165. Uh, While well, Team Velocity came into this, they needed a long shot at the title, and they didn't get it. Uh, in fact, they didn't get either car in the points. They will finish off the season on 142 points, uh, which means that overtaking them will be Hetmenica and Apt Amazing, scoring 11 points today with a P5 and a P10, and that puts them on a nice round 150 points. Your final championship order is BFX winning the World Constructors Championship with 183 points, uh, they beat BAV by 18 points in the end to finish on 165 in second place. Uh, third place in the championship uh, went to Thunder X in the end. Uh, what an incredible season for them. And Grandy, one point away from winning the World Drivers' Championship, but it was never meant to be. Uh, third place for them. Then fourth place will be Porsche. Another solid season for them, but they know, know, they know, they knew they could have been in championship contention had things gone their way. Uh, Apple Amazing, unfortunately, at the end, just not quite taking the points that he needed with big token spends. And Team Velocity will finish their lowest ever fifth place in the Constructors' Championship. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, Fuerza Roja score 13 points. Uh, that will take them well clear of Papi Pops Racing. They finish, in the end, um, 24 points ahead of the Canadian team, who, just as they came up last season will return to Challenger Virtual to attempt to win it once again. It's been good to have them in the league, but their story for now is over. And this season, forever, is over. Ultimate Virtual 4 has wrapped up. It was the closest championship fight we've ever had in a season. Came right down to the wire, and everything could have been. Teams will be very happy, very upset. But, push come to shove. Rito and BFX are your champions. That's been all. I really hope you've enjoyed this season. 12 races, albeit in a hectic manner with a lot of pauses and then a lot of tight schedules. But we'll return for season 5 not long from now. Until then, bye bye.